What's up guys, this is Austin back with another unboxing and review. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the sets from Hasbro's new Mission Fleet line. I always like to start my videos by saying thank you to all of my new subscribers. If this is your first time watching one of my videos and you enjoy this review, I hope you'll consider subscribing. This new collection was introduced by Hasbro back in February of this year. Each set comes with a 2 and one half inch minifigure that fits in their respective ship, walker, or speeder. I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing one set from each price point. I have bought all of the sets from this new collection, but to keep this video shorter, I'm only going to unbox my favorites. I may show the other sets, but I'll only be unboxing these three. Before I start with the unboxing, I wanted to mention that these sets are still up for pre-order on Entertainment Earth. I've posted a link to these sets below in the description, and by ordering through that link, you can help to support my channel and future reviews. Like normal, we'll quickly take a look at each box before we move on to the actual figure and vehicles. Let's start off with the smallest pack, which is the clone trooper with his somewhat unique jetpack. This card back displays some super cool art that runs between the Star Wars logo in the top left and the Disney slash Hasbro logo in the bottom right. The back of the card shows a glimpse of the other small packs from this collection, as well as a digital rendition of this trooper and jetpack. Moving on to the slightly larger larger set, we have the Mandalorian with his speeder bike and the child. The box art on this one is super awesome, showing Mando cruising with the child through the streets of Navarro. The back displays a photo of each piece from this set in a one-to-one -one scale. I really like this design because it gives you an idea of what you'll be getting without even opening the box. The final box in this set is the Jedi Starfighter. The design here is very similar to that of the Mandalorian box, with the amazing art on the front and the one-to-one -one scale imaging on the back. Alright, let's start cracking these open. Articulation-wise, all of these figures are going to be the same. We have a ball joint at the neck that allows for tilt and swivel. At the shoulder, we have a hinge as well as swivel. And at the wrist, we have swivel again. At the waist, we have a T crotch, and that's all of the articulation that we're going to get for this figure. For accessories, this clone comes with his DC-15S as well as his jetpack. On the back here, it looks like the wings are deployable, but they're actually just articulated, so you're going to have to move those yourself. On the back of the figure, you have this hole for the jetpack. The overall look of these sets is pretty unique, although some may argue that these are super similar to Mattel's older Imagine X line, but I do love the look of this trooper. Also in this cardback Mission Fleet collection, we have the Ahsoka Aquatic Attack set, the Boba Fett Capture and Cloud City set, and the Chewbacca Beachfront Barrage set. Again, for the sake of time, I will not be unboxing these. Moving on, let's open this Mandalorian set. This one is pretty tough to find in person, so I was excited when I found one earlier this week. The set does come with a one-page, very straightforward direction sheet, but this is what we're really looking at. Straight out of the box, I would say this is quite a few accessories for the $15 price mark. This set includes the Mandalorian, his speeder bike, the child, which fits in the hover pram, a projectile launcher, and three accessories for Mando. I would say the detail on this Mandalorian figure is pretty good for the scale. I'm not going to cover the articulation on this figure because it's the exact same as the clone trooper. Mando comes with his jetpack blaster, and of course his rifle. Again, for the scale, the details on these accessories are pretty good. Mando does come with a removable cape so you can put the jetpack on. That actually scales pretty perfectly. His speeder also has some nice detail with a pack on the back that has some pouches. Despite the limited articulation on the Mandalorian figure, he does sit really well on this speeder. You can also slot the launcher right here in this spot. And of course you can load this in here and shoot it across the room and inevitably lose it. Personally, I'm not a fan of this launcher and if I were to display it, I think I would take it off. The child has some great detail work on the head sculpt and the body as he holds the shifter knob. His only point of articulation is gonna be the ball joint in his neck. Again, he fits in this hover pram, which has one articulating part. The figure does slip a little bit when you try to put him into the pram, but if you can get him balanced, he'll look like this. As seen in the box art, this does come with a connector for the pram to the speeder. And when you hook everything together, this is what it looks like. The other sets that can be found in this midsize mission fleet collection are the clone combat set with Captain Rex and the Jedi speeder chase set with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Last but not least, we have the Jedi Starfighter set. The prequels are my favorite in the Star Wars saga. Yes, go ahead and judge me. So I'm looking forward to seeing the details on this set. All right, let's unbox this thing. Again, a basic one-page instruction sheet. All right, this is it straight out of the box. I'm really excited to take a more detailed look at the ship. Anakin does have a very cartoon or animated look to him, but I'm completely okay with that. He does come with his blue lightsaber, which has pretty good detail work on the hilt. This set also comes with a blaster that can be mounted on the side of the ship. I'll show you that now. Okay, this is with the blaster or cannon on, and we're going to put that in. 
Again, I probably wouldn't display the ship with the blaster or cannon, but we do get a tripod that connects to it like this. So if you didn't notice, this tripod is actually two separate pieces. That's actually kind of cool because you can adjust the legs here and it can sit straight up like this, or you can bend the legs like this to point the cannon in a more upward direction. The ship itself looks fantastic and I was most excited for this accessory. They've added a bit of weathering to the ship by adding marks and chips on the yellow paint, giving it a more worn look. Of course, we have R2 here. He does swivel at the head, but he cannot be removed from the ship itself. The wings do have deployable panels, which I was hoping would be automatic, but you do have to lift them manually. You can set the ship down with the panels open, or of course you can set it down with them closed. The other sets that can be found in this mission fleet collection are the TIE Advance with Darth Vader and the X-Wing Fighter with Luke Skywalker. Now that we've unboxed all three of those sets, I've added two more to this picture, Boba Fett and Obi-Wan, which are from different sets. My overall impression of the Mission Fleet Collection is that it definitely has potential. Hasbro has made some really good choices with the first wave and I'm hopeful that they continue it. These sets range from $8 to $40 and I think that any Star Wars collector could find something that they like in this line, whether it's Boba Fett, Mandalorian, or Clone Troopers. My only gripes with the sets that I've unboxed thus far is this child figure. I do wish that he was slightly smaller so we could replicate what we see here on the box art. Having said that, there is one positive note about this figure. If we bring in the Black Series version of the child, you can see that the sizes are actually pretty comparable. The one cool thing that I noticed is that these head sculpts can actually be swapped, which I'm going to do right now. This is the Mission Fleet head sculpt on the Black Series body, and this is the Black Series head sculpt on the Mission Fleet body. The green paint on the Black Series head sculpt doesn't exactly match the green on the Mission Fleet version. I would say that the Mission Fleet head sculpt looks pretty good on the Black Series body. I guess the real question is, does the Black Series body fit in this pram? And it definitely does. I actually think it looks pretty decent. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I also have a toy photography account where I'll be posting shots of these sets very soon. If you have any suggestions for a video you'd like to see in the future, drop a comment below. As always, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.